once our network is ready, so you can see we have a network, we have an order up here who is responsible to instantiate this network with the help of a configuration. Now this configuration which is NC4 is created by R4, right? Now R4 is our organization and uh, so it has taken this responsibility of, uh, you know, defining the network. But uh, R4 says, okay, I got the network configuration, but I need someone else to also uh, do the admin work and that's where we got R1. Now we do have these two organizations and how do we define the components for R4 is with the help of CA, right, which is your uh, certificate authority uh, 4. Basically we'll be having different CAs for different organizations here. This looks cool, right? But hold on, when you build a network, of course you need to have organizations, they will be doing some transactions which you want to store on a blockchain. And looking at this image now, there's nowhere, there's no blockchain here. See, it's very simple. You can simply create a, a network of all these organizations. Basically, we have four organizations here, R1, R2, R3, and R4, and they will be doing transactions, right? Okay, uh, th that's simple. They can, share the they can share the same ledger. But what extra you get in Hyperledger Fabric is a concept of channel. Now, why? what is channel, basically? See, when you have four organizations, they can share the same ledger. The only problem is whenever you do a transaction between two organizations or three organizations, it will be visible to everyone. There might be some transactions which you don't want everyone to see. There might be some confidentiality which you don't want to reveal to the other organizations. Uh, something is happening between R1 and R2. We don't want that R3 to know about it. So what we can do is we can create channels for that. But before going for the concept of channels, we have to first create a consortium. Now, consortium is basically, it's a collection of multiple organizations trying to achieve the same goal. Uh, so here we have R1 and R2, they want to build their own consortium. So let's say we have R1 and R2, uh, that's their consortium. And so we can name the consortium, we can have a consortium name, let's say X1. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter, name doesn't matter actually. Uh, so we have these two organizations here, right? They want to build the consortium. Now, since we have two organizations, we have R1 and R2, uh, we also need to have a CA for them, right? We have a CA for R4, we also need a CA for R1 and R2. Uh, so maybe it's time to take CA1 and CA2 on, in the picture, so let's take them. Uh, so basically CA1 is responsible to uh, give the certificates to the components of R1 and uh, CA2 is responsible for, of course, R2. Now, once this is ready, it's time to do some transactions. But then the moment you say transactions, it, they need to s follow the same uh, network, a, a separate network, or can we say subnets, right? So it's a big network in which you can create small networks. Uh, so we can call them as channels, something like this. We have a channel here, and in this channel, we'll be having only two organizations, R1 and R2. So basically, this is for the consortium X1. Uh, quite simple, right? Uh, but then here also, whenever you want to add the data in a blockchain for a particular channel, you need the help of an order, right? So we can take help of order, they will, it will be connected. Uh, this makes sense, right? Now, if you look at the configuration, so for the entire network, we have a configuration which is NC4. Now, NC4 is a configuration file basically for the entire network, but uh, for channels, we can have a separate, we will be having a separate configuration. Uh, so whatever things you want to do in the channel will be done in a separate channel configuration. So network configuration don't have any, any say on C1. Now you will say why? A simple reason. The C1, which is a channel here, we want only two organizations to be part of it, right? R1 and R2. We don't want R4 to be a part of it. And the network configuration is managed by R4. Right, so uh, we don't want to reveal those properties with R4, right? So what we can do is we can have a separate file, separate uh, configuration for the channels. And we can name it as CC1, doesn't matter. So if you have five channels, you'll be having five configurations, right? Uh, so for this C1, we'll be having a configuration which is CC1. Now, who will be managing the C1, uh, CC1 uh, configuration? Of course, it will be your organizations so let's say r1 and r2 because they are the part of this network okay this looks cool and, and of course c1 will be configured with the help of cc1 now this looks cool right uh, so we got a channel we have done with the configuration 
Now, see, when you talk about one organization, it it can have multiple nodes, right? Of course, you need machines to communicate. Uh, one big company can have multiple nodes, or maybe you you just you just want to use one node. That's your choice. In this example, because we have a short image, we'll be going for one node. Uh, so basically, for this organization R1, I want to have one node. Now, just to reiterate, node is a simple machine, a computer. So what we can do here is we can get a node. So let's say P1. So P1 is our node here. Uh, okay, but then what exactly P1 will have? So P1 will have a ledger. And that's important, right? Every node will be having the data. And that's the entire purpose of a node, right? Why would you why would you need a node which is not saving data? Uh, so we will need a ledger. So let's say let's say L1 is a ledger. And this node will be connected to the to the to the channel, right? So whatever transaction you want to do, you can do it here. But what if you want to do some transactions here? So maybe you want to do some transaction will be which will be stored on L1. How will you do that? Uh, the thing is, when you talk about a blockchain network or the fabric network, it will be a separate thing compared to the to the real world, right? So as a user, I will be using an application which will be interacting with the blockchain network. So as a user, I will not be jumping into the network and I will do the transactions, right? I will be using a separate application. So let's say we have a separate application, which is A1, which is outside the network. You can see that green boundaries, that's everything inside that is a, is a part of the network. A1 is outside a component. Now A1 will be sending the request to do some transaction. How, will, how it will do that? So A1 will send a request to the channel, right? So A1 will say, okay, I have, I want to do this transaction with, with these two companies only. So let's say R1 and R2, and uh, you want to do some transaction. But the thing is, A1 is an application, right? It can be written in any language you want. So it's, it is outside the network. Maybe you can use some, uh, uh, web service here to call it, but it's a separate part. In the blockchain as well, in the fabric as well, you need to write some application, which you, you have to write some code which will act on that request. Uh, it will do, it will act, it will do some processing. It will, it will save the data in the in the, trans, in the ledger, right? How will you do that? How will you write a code inside uh, the node? And that's where we have a concept of chain code. Remember. So chain code is a smart contract. So basically when you say you're writing a smart contract, you have to package it in a chain code. Okay, so basically we have to write a smart contract. Now, if you don't know about smart contract, it's very easy, it's, it is just a simple code, right? Even if you write a uh, addition of two numbers, that's a smart contract in the blockchain world. But then smart contract has a very big application. Okay, we can talk about that later. So basically we need a smart contract. So let's say S5 is, is our smart contract. So this node will be having a S5 as a, as a smart contract. This looks cool, right? Now I have a question for you. Can we have multiple nodes? Simple answer, yes. <laughs> uh, difficult, difficult question. If this node will be having a ledger. Now since it's a, it's a different node, you can see we are using a different color combinations here. So this P1 belongs to R1. You can see that pink boundaries here. And this P2 belongs to R2. We can, you can see a gray boundary. I don't, I'm not sure if this, this uh, is actually visible in the video, but I can see in this slide. Uh, okay, so it, it is two different nodes, right? We have a different color. What about the ledger? Will they share the same ledger if they're in the same, same channel? Uh, think about it. We are using a channel and this channel is there so that we can have uh, uh, a separate communication between P1 and P2, which will be different from different organizations, right? So of course, these two nodes should be sharing the same ledger. So of course, it will be L1. Uh, so P1 also will be having L1, P2 will also be having L1. And uh, what about smart contract? Will they have a separate smart contract or same? Well, we can talk about it. But then also P2 is connected with the, with the channel. Now, what about smart contract? Now, since we have a same ledger, since we'll be using the same application, which will send the request, they need to have the same smart contract. Uh, okay, with that, I have a further question for you. Think about it, we'll not be answering that in this, maybe in this video, but think about it. Can we have one node with multiple ledgers and multiple smart contracts? Think about it, okay? There's no rush. You can wait for the next video. Uh, but that's a question for you. If you know the answer, you can just use the comment section, answer that. 
but here we got this is what we got till now so we got a channel we got two nodes now the amazing thing is we have this channel with two nodes p1 p2 two organizations basically we can't we will not be having r3 and r4 interacting with this channel and that's the beauty about it now this looks cool right uh, we have also talked about one more uh, one more organization which is r3 so what if we can have a separate consortium for R2 and R3. Maybe they want to do some transactions. Can we do that? Uh, as I simple, right? We can. Uh, we just have to create a separate channel, which we'll do later. Uh, then we'll be having nodes for that. We'll be having uh, so external applications for that. And we can see in the next video. So just to reiterate, what we have done is we got a network in which you got the configuration because of which you got the network instantiated by the order of peer. Uh, and then this network is uh, administrated by R1 and R2, sorry R4. But then we also wanted to have a separate conf separate uh, transactions for these two organizations, R1 and R2. So we can get a separate channel for that. And this channel will be having the nodes from these two organizations. We can have, let's say, P3 from R2. We can have P4 from R1. So one organization can have multiple nodes. But what, imp what is important is no other organizations will be able to enter in this channel without doing the changes in the CC1. And of course, it is managed by R1 or R2. So if they give permission, then only it, will, it is allowed. Uh, so yeah, that's what we have done till now. In the next video, let's have some more fun with more channels and uh, more consortium. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos. Bye-bye.